Hey, this is PJ with Seal Case Supplies, and today we're going to talk about HPC code cards. We're going to talk about the popular ways to store them and the popular ways to organize them. Now, when you purchase your HPC 1200 Blitz machines, they're going to come with a binder just like this. Now, these binders are made for you to put all your code cards in, and I'll open it up here and I'll show you. These hold 20 cards per page, just like this. I just filled up one so you can kind of see what it looks like here. Now, the benefits of a binder like this are that if you have a place that you store other catalogs or books, you can easily include it there so you always know where they are. Also, when you open it up and you go to look at and try to find the right card, it's pretty easy to do because how they're visually displayed. All right? Now, if you run out of room or you rip one of these pages, you can purchase additional pages or inserts to put in here, all right? Now, probably the biggest downside to a binder like this is that if it were to fall off like a workbench like this, all right, now what I'll do is I'll just gently drop it right here. As you can see, one card started to come out here a little bit. Now, if you can imagine if this, if I wasn't gentle on it, we'd have a little mess on our hands here, right? You can see they're starting to fall a little bit. So. If you accidentally have one of those oops moments and this thing goes flying, uh, you're definitely gonna have a lot of code cards to pick up and reorganize. Right, now the other downside is that if you use your 1200 Blitz machine a lot, which hopefully you do, these pages will start to rip and get worn and you're gonna have to buy replacements for it. Which is no big deal, but some guys don't like to do that. Now the, the other option I see common for storing code cards is using a little index card holder like this. Now this is just a little metal index card holder. As you can see, the cards fit in here really nice. <clears throat> now the benefits of using a little box like this is that it's really compact, especially in a van situation. A lot of guys will mount it, they'll screw it down to the workbench right next to their machine. All right, that way you know it's, they're not gonna go flying, they're gonna be right where you left them, and it's pretty easy to open it up and kind of thumb through to find the card you want. All right, so this is the two most common methods of storing your code cards. Next, now let's talk about organization. Now, there's two primary ways guys like to organize their, cord, their code cards, and I'm curious to see how you do it. All right, so the first way is to organize it by the card number. Right, so on the top of every card, there's a little uh, card number right here. Like this is card XF36. All right, so you would just put those in order, right? Starting with one, and needing 200, 300. Um, and that way, when you go to open up your, you, you go to pull up a code, and you get all the code information, it's also gonna tell you the card number, right? So you just open up your binder, or open up your, your file here, and you find that, card number, and you're ready to go. Now, the other way guys like to or organize their code cards is gonna be by make alphabetically, right? So they're gonna have all of the Toyota cards together, all the Ford cards together, you know, all of the Schlage cards together, whatever it may be, they're just gonna put them alphabetically and they're gonna find them that way, right? So the main reason is that if uh, you were gonna get ready to like hand file a key, and you're a little, and you wanted to brush up, make sure you knew what the, how many depths there were and what the spaces were. You could pull up the code card, take a look at it, and get familiar with what you're about ready to impression, right? And some guys even will put the card in and they'll go ahead and make little tiny marks where each space is so they make sure they identify the proper marks, right? Now, in the same way, if you were just to look up the um, code and it gives you the card number, and let's say it was, you know, like XF74 or something, and it happened to be like a Toyota card or something, you could easily just go to Toyota and look for that card number. So the argument is, is that by putting them in alphabetically, by make, you can get the best of both worlds, right? Compared to if you were to organize them just by card number. So those are the two kind of train of thoughts when it comes to organizing and storing HPC code cards. I'm interested to know what your thoughts are. Please leave some comments, comments below on how you do it. Maybe it'll help someone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.